Right, so we have a question here that's been asked many times by my students at school um, from one of the Solomon papers. And um, I've answered this quite a few times now, so I thought I would make a recording of it because a lot of students have problems with this question. Now, they tell us about a force in terms of vectors. So the force F1, um, 5I plus 2J newtons, acts on at the point A on a lamina. A lamina is like a flat surface, it's a flat kind of object, okay, where the position vector of A relative to a fixed origin O is 3I minus 2J meters. Calculate the magnitude and the sense of the moment of the force about O. Now, when it says the sense of the moment, it means the direction like clockwise or anti-clockwise. Anti so in order to answer this question, the best way to deal with it is to resolve these this force horizontally and vertically. All right? So let's first look at the point. So say the point O is over here. 3i minus 2j. So it's like you're going three units to the right three units to the right and two units down okay something like this let's say that's where the point A is this point over here so that's three meters to the right and two meters down okay and they tell us that the force is 5i plus 2j acting at the point A so at this point you've got a force acting Okay, and the force okay, is acting 5i, um, so it's like 5 to the right. Let me just make that go through there. I'm making this quite long so that we can use its distance. So that's 5 newtons this way, and um, plus 2j, so 2 newtons straight up going through A. Okay, so that's 2 newtons here. So if we think about this component, the 5 Newton component, um, and the moment of that about O, okay, well, the perpendicular distance between O and the force of the line of force 5 Newtons okay, is 2 meters. That's 2 meters, right? So you can say that the moment of the 5 Newtons about O is 5 times this 2 here, right? And that's in the anti-clockwise direction, okay? That will be in the anti-clockwise direction. And the two Newtons, which is acting going up this way, its perpendicular distance from O is three meters. So that's also anti-clockwise. So we can say plus, and you're gonna have two times three. Okay, that's 10 plus six, which is 16 Newton meters in the anti-clockwise direction. Okay, so that's, the magnitude and the sense anti-clockwise of the moment of the force about O. Okay, so splitting it into its horizontal and, and vertical components um, really helps in this type of question. Now part B, okay, it says another force, F2, which is PI plus QJ. Okay, let me just move this up a bit so we can see what's happening. All right, um, acts at the point B with position vector minus i plus 4j meters, so that the resultant moment of the two forces, F1 and F2, about O is zero. So minus i plus 4j. Okay, position vector means its position in relative, relative to the origin. Okay, so minus i means one unit, let me just get that same arrow again, one unit to the left. Okay. So you got one unit to the left, that's minus i plus 4j, so four units up. Okay, that's where the point B is in relation to the origin. So that's one meter that way and four meters that way. And the force acting at B, okay, um, is pi plus qj. So pi, so that would be, that would be p, and qj, that would be q. Okay, so that's, that's P and that's um, Q, all right? So the moment, it says, 
um, so that the resultant moment of the two forces F1 and F2 about O is zero. That means the moment of this force, F2, has to be equal and opposite to the moment of that force. It has to be 60 new newton meters clockwise for it, the resultant to be zero. You understand? So if you think about the moment about of P about O, well, the distance of P from O is 4 meters. Okay, so you can say 4 times P, and the distance of Q from O is 1 meter. Yeah, the, ho the, the perpendicular distance of the line of the force Q from O is 1 meter. So 4P plus Q must be equal to 16. All right, so that's one equation that we get that will help us. And then it says, given also that the moment of F2 about A is 13 Newton, that's actually supposed to say meters, 13 Newton meters, okay, in a clockwise sense. So the moment of F2 about A is 34 Newton meters clockwise. So let's think about the moment of F2, this is F2, the force 2, P and Q, about A. So if you think about uh, P, its distance from A is going to be this distance from there all the way up. Whoops, let me use the other line. Okay, it's going to be from here all the way up to where it's going to meet this line here. Yeah, where, whoops. Where's it going to meet that line? Why is, it not, why is it doing that? Okay. What's that distance here? Well, you've got 2 meters plus 4 meters. That's 6 meters. Right, so that's 6 times P. So that's 6P. And then you're going to have this distance here from A. That's 3 meters plus 1 meters, which is 4 meters. That's where it meets the line of the force Q. Okay. If you think that's 3 meters plus 1 meters, that's 4 meters altogether from there to there. Okay, that's four meters from there to there. Okay, so you can say um, that's four meters times Q. So it's plus four Q, and that has to equal, it says, 34 Newton meters. So that's equal to 34. Okay, so you have our two equations. Yeah, so we can solve them simultaneously. This one, we could divide everything by 2 to make it simpler. So that's 3P plus 2Q equals 17. And then we can take equation 1 and multiply it by 2. If you take equation 1 and multiply it by 2, you're going to have 8P plus 2Q equals 32. Okay, and we can now subtract these two equations. If I subtract 4 minus 3, I have 8p minus 1p, 3p, which is 5p, equals 32 minus 17, which is 15, right? So therefore, p is equal to 3. And we can find what q is. We know that 4 times 3 plus q equals 16. So q is going to be 16 minus 12 which is 4. So we end up with P equals 3 and Q equals 4, and there we have our answer. So uh, a question like this is simplified greatly by resolving forces horizontally and vertically, which is something which is very common in mechanics. Okay, is that clear? Okay.